Benjamin, I'm going to ask you firstly, from where I'm sitting, it currently looks as though if I was in Albania having a nice life with my wife and kids and I decided to drive across mainland Europe, get on a small boat in Calais and land somewhere around the Kent area, I could kiss the sand and say I'm an asylum seeker and Bob's your uncle, I get to stay in Britain. Is that as pathetic as it sounds? Yeah, it's absolutely farcical. We've been told for the past few years, you know, almost patronised actually that these people are fleeing war and terror. It turns out that six in ten of them are just fleeing Albania, which, by the way, is currently in the process of joining the EU. So it can't be the absolute worst hellhole in the world that we've been told it is for the past couple of years when we've been told that we have to accept these people in because they're fleeing the worst abject circumstances possible. Um, you know, it's, it really does spit in the face, I think, of the British people that we now find out that these people are coming from a country which hasn't been at war in the past 25 years and is actually um, a developing country. OK, now, with your legal hat on, immigration lawyer at Privatus Ivan Sampson, can you just confirm to me something I think I know, which is that our government, despite saying they wanted to sort out what was going on in the Channel, knowingly signed a legal agreement with a country that actually, frankly, changed nothing, as long as someone said they were an asylum seeker? Well, it has changed something, because if you don't claim asylum, that agreement stands and Albania will accept them. Um, it's not Albania who's refusing to accept them. We have an obligation under the Refugee Convention to consider all of asylum applicants. And that starts off with a, what's called an asylum screening interview, then a substantive interview, and the decision is made, and then their appeal right right the way to the Supreme Court and further, further afield with the European Convention on Human Rights. What the government should be doing is fast-tracking the asylum application because at the moment it's taking about 12 months before they even interview somebody for asylum, this substantive interview. Um, so th that's the reason that there's delays, that's the reason there's a backlog. Now, if, if a person is a bogus asylum seeker, that decision should be made quickly. They should be interviewed quickly and a decision delivered to them. Then there's the added problem of what do you do if they haven't got any identity documents? And again, we need to work with the Albanians using technology, using fingerprints and face recognition to get the Albanians to identify people once they've been refused asylum and remove them to Albania. That whole process can be done in a matter of a few weeks. Um, Unfortunately, okay. it takes all about right. 12 months or 18 months to get a decision. Yeah, OK, all right, I'll return to you. Benjamin Lotnane from the Bow Group, I'll throw it back to you. Do you feel like giving up when it comes to wanting strong borders? Because it appears that absolutely nobody in any political party at the minute has any intention of sorting out what's going on in the channel at all. Well, we shouldn't give up, but I don't have much hope that we're actually going to achieve it because uh, this government certainly hasn't expressed any desire to crack down on this. Liz Truss actually came out the other day and said that we need more immigration, not less. So clearly she doesn't have the perspective on this that most of the country does. I don't think she really cares. But going back to uh, what he said earlier, um, Ivan earlier was saying about uh, the Convention on Refugees. Well, that actually says that refugees should, or asylum seekers should claim asylum in the first safe country they reach. Now, in most cases, if you're fleeing war and terror, that's not going to be Britain, that's going to be because you're crossing through so many countries to get here in the first place. But in the case of Albania, the first safe country is Albania because they're not at war. It's not, a, it's not an unsafe country. There's nothing to flee from in, uh, in Albania. So this idea that somehow people can go through so many safe countries to get to Britain and still, because of the uh, Convention on, Human, uh, on, um, on Refugees, we have in some way got to grant them asylum is absolutely farcical. There's no reason why they need to reach Britain. Okay. They could stop at any country on the way Benjamin there. Benjamin's hit a really interesting point there. Ivan, as an immigration lawyer, what am I able to claim asylum from if I'm Albanian? Well, the, a lot of the Albanian claims that I've seen is to do with blood feuds. So what they're saying is their life is in danger because another family member is threatening their life and the government is not protecting them because they're corrupt. And that's most of the Albanian claims. But I'll just take issue with what your, the other guest said about that asylum seekers have to claim asylum in the first country they've come across. It won't stop an asylum seeker claiming asylum in the UK, even if they've been around Europe twice. Um, we still have to consider the claim, even if they haven't done that. Now, before Brexit, we could return people to France, coming from France under the Dublin Convention. Since 
leaving the EU, we can't do that because we're no longer a party to that convention. Before we left the EU, there should have been a, an agreement uh, replicating Dublin. Um, nobody was doing the thinking. The government was so eager to get out the EU, they didn't really think about what would happen to people we want to return who've claimed asylum in France. So um, we need a proper strategy. Uh, okay. Ivan. Yeah, there you are. Ivan, I'm just going to stop you there because, Benjamin, I think Ivan hit on a really interesting point, which is that if a lot of Albanian people are claiming they've got blood feuds with other Albanians in Albania and the government is too corrupt to sort it out, and then a load of Albanians come here, presumably those blood feuds will still exist on the streets of Britain. We end up with another Leicester-style scenario where we had elements of a Hindu sect and elements of a Pakistani sect going at it, another Iranian embassy scenario. Are we just importing foreign problems? You've, you've struck exactly on what I was going to say. This is, um, this is the worst possible thing we can do, is importing these blood feuds into the UK. When the Albanians flee these uh, blood feuds from Albania, they tend to bring them with them. And we have seen this in the case of Leicester, and we have seen it elsewhere. It's a terrible idea to import problems from elsewhere into the UK, because what, when they're coming to a safe place, it doesn't stay safe for very long. And then all of a sudden, they've just spread the problem over here. And it's a, it's a terrible idea for us to have a, a system where we can't even get rid of the people who break the law by coming into the country in the first place and then bring crime and terror and all other sorts of things along with them. I think it's absolutely outrageous and the government really needs to get a handle on this as soon as possible. I've, Ivan, I'll give the final word to you. Immigration lawyer, a privilege says Ivan Sampson. How long is it going to be before people in Britain are claiming asylum from our asylum system? Well, believe it or not, people claim asylum in the US as well, even what's called whitelist countries. Look, it doesn't mean that the blood feuds are genuine. You're making an assumption that these claims are genuine. In my experience, they're not the vast majority of them. But what we need to do is the Home Office need to get a grip of this processing system. We need to have a proper uh, system which complies with our duty under the Convention, gives everyone a fair chance, but does it in a quick and efficient way. That's the problem. And as I said, if we were to overhaul the Home Office, um, we could actually assess applications within a few weeks and not years, which is what's happening at the moment.